Hello and welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is Krista Detmer and I'm doing this presentation for Liberty University, uh, my Education 504 class on uh, education and philosophy. I'm going to be presenting uh, a philosopher and his philosophies today. Um, today I'm going to be presenting Johann Heinrich Pistolazzi. Um, he was an educator, um, a philosopher, and he was also a Protestant. He was a Christian and those beliefs came out in his method. Um, so he was very instr instrumental in the 18th century, um, and that is when they were doing the kindergarten era movement, um, and they were really starting to focus on early childhood education. Um, so he was also considered, if he had to be categorized, um, he would be considered a, a realist. Um, he felt that his purpose was to lead people to the truth. So he might start in early childhood education, but in the end, he was always looking to lead people to the truth. Um, and he was followed by Maria Montessori and Frederick Fogel um, and believed that children are to be educated from a place of love. Um, and not just a place of love, like we care for children um, and we want the best for them, but specifically a maternal love. Um, maternal love being um, nourishing, um, giving all very emotional love. Um, so they felt that all teaching should come from that and that that is the essence of education, and it is fundamental to education. And that spiritual love, also the maternal love, um, was a very fundamental to education, and that is put into action. It's not theory, but it's love in action in education, um, in practice. So Pestalozzi's theory also emphasized that the whole child be educated, not just the intellect, not just the academic, Drills, figures, facts, numbers, um, the whole child, the heart, the hand, and the head. Um, and that was also in agreement with what um, Maria Montessori and Frederick Fogel also believed. Um, so, the principle is still used in uh, schools today, especially in early childhood education. There are several of his principles that we can still see today um, that we have learned from, and that's why, again, he's called sometimes the father of modern education. Um, his principle, his philosophies of uh, educating the whole child from a maternal love, everything comes from that, um, which he called, and everyone called, the method, okay? And it was always with the capital M, um, and so that was his philosophy, that was his, the name of his philosophy. Um, so he advocated for a comprehensive education for those that were disadvantaged, uneducated and poor. Um, and in 1957, over 100 years after his death, the Pestalozzi International Village was founded and applied the Pestalozzi method. Um, this charity-based group offers services that provide inspiration for students to think globally um, and to make a difference in the world. His purpose, his, um, his thoughts are to come after being educated with this method, um, with the maternal love, the, the whole child, is that these desires to change the world and make a difference globally are to come into, um, intuitively and intrinsically. They're to come from inside. They're not um, something that's motivated from the outside. It's motivated from the foundation of love that was set when the child was younger. Um, currently, representatives travel all around the world to interview uh, prospective students who are recommended to join the program. Um, these are academically gifted children, but financially disadvantaged. Um, now, selecting students in this way, I feel, is in opposition to Pestalozzi's philosophy. Um, it's for the disadvantaged, but the uneducated, it, it's, that's not who this is for. So I think that kind of goes in opposition of what his philosophy was, because it does not take into consideration the uneducated. Um, he also felt that all educational institutions should be able to tailor every lesson to the willingness and the needs of the child. Um, and as an educator, uh, my research has not indicated any way that we would be able to do that as a society today or even back then. Um, today, budgets and finances and so, so forth, just personnel, um, we could barely provide what is necessary for our special education needs, say, an individual education per, uh, plan. Um, so I don't know how he planned to if, um, put that into practice realistically. Um, there's just no way that we could do that on a large scale. Um, 
funding has always been limited and um, it makes it hard, our ability to adequately educate students is sometimes difficult. Now, Petalazzi postulates that from the intellectual point of view, the idea of elementary education maintains a pediologic principle. Excuse me. Okay, I had just had to make sure that we were, we were still rolling there. Um, so, from an intellectual point of view, the idea that elementary education maintains the pediological principle that life is a factor of education and must be an education for life. So, that is, life is a factor of education and must be an education for life. Um, so, in addition to that, Montessori, Dewey, and Pestalozzi agree that instruction begins with familiar items. You don't take children into school and start them off with something completely abstract and new to them. You start with something familiar and then you work your way progressively to new and abstract ideas. Um, and this is uh, naturally paced based on the child's developmental age. So you've got ages and stages in development and then this instruction is paced with that. Um, so it's the natural pace. Um, Pestalozzi wanted men to believe that through my own work, the world becomes meaningful to me. That through my own work, the world becomes meaningful to me. So I see a biblical connection there um, with this thought. Um, John 17, 13 through 19. And now I come, I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them also into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Um, so there we get back to Pestalozzi's truth. Um, and another note is that John Amos Chromius, a 14th century uh, educator, um, suggested using visual aids, um, which was something that astonished people in the educational field at the time. They were not using anything like that. So he suggested using visual aids. Then Pestalozzi comes along, and in the 18th century, he went even a step further um, and said that we should use physical object lessons. So we should use something, an object that students could feel, smell, see, and hear. And that way, there would be, the material would be more relatable. Um, and in opposition to his method, some say that he wanted to mechanize education. So in opposition to his theory, they were saying that he wanted he was trying to mechanize education. And in addition to that, uh, Sybil Reinhardt of Germany believes that the Pestalozzi program may have negative views of political and social sciences. Um, and I can see that because those are not sciences that come or bore out of love, especially not maternal love. Um, they said that he was a patriot who wanted to educate the people and then emancipate them. Um, so I can understand how this might be true beyond early childhood education. Um, again, most social sciences and politics do not evoke feelings of acts of love, um, and they're generally very negative. Um, so if you have not received my handout, um, please do so, and that will give you references for all of the material that I've covered. Thank you, and have a great day.